uh, in this video I thought I'd show you some of my art things that I've been doing. Uh, this semester I was lucky enough to get into the custom printing elective, uh, which focuses on etching. And uh, what's really cool is uh, with this class is it's actually run by Cicada Press, which is sort of a... Uh, it's not really separate from UNSW Art and Design, but it's kind of its own thing inside it. And so it's not just uh, students learning things. They've actually got recognised artists from outside the uni to come in and do work. And we get to work with some of the artists as well as doing our own things. Um, yeah, and it, it's it's a really different kind of course. I mean, they mix undergrad and postgrad as well as having these outside artists. So, yeah, really interesting class. Um, and the techniques and learning stuff is really interesting. I mean, some of the classes at uni are more conceptual rather than learning techniques. Uh, and it was just cool that we actually got to learn so much in this class and hands-on type stuff. But anyway, this uh, work is Skippers by uh, Ewan McLeod. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm really sorry if I've butchered that. Um, but he's one of these outside artists and uh, I, I'm really glad that I got to keep this one. Uh, it's actually just an artist's proof, but I got to keep it because I helped out on uh, doing an auditioning session for the uh, you know actual proper versions of it. Um, and I'm happy I got to keep this one because I think it's really interesting. He, uh, instead of doing the sort of drawing style of etching, he actually does this sort of brushwork thing. And I'm pretty sure the way he gets that to look like brushwork is through using um, probably Aquatint. Um, and I'll try my best to explain that in a set. Um, but yeah, I just, I love how interesting it looks uh, and just thought it was something a bit different. So this video I'll show you some of my work. Um, I'm not super great at drawing, so mine aren't going to look like this. But yeah, I'll try to explain what I've done and how the etching thing goes and also show you some of the other classwork. Um, oh yeah, and just before I move on, let's have a look at this. This is the little cicada press thingy and you can actually feel it. I like it. It's really cute. You can get t-shirts with this, but I don't know. I didn't get one. Anyway, let's look at some stuff. All right, so you might be wondering what etching actually is. Um, I'm not a printmaking expert, but I will do my best to explain what I've learned. Um, basically, you get a metal plate. This, this is a zinc plate that I've done. Um, it's just a little one. And what happens is you start off by covering it with a uh, ground. Um, it's this stuff that kind of protects the plate. And then where you want to make a mark, you get a little etching scribe thing. I think I've got one here. A little etching scribe thing. And you just draw lines um, into the ground. And that scrapes it off. And then exposes a little bit of metal underneath it. And then you take that and you put the whole plate into the acid. And if you can see when I... I should move it around. It's a bit hard to see in the camera with the light. But you can kind of see there's... The part that's most like regular etching on this plate is, see, you've got this smooth bit and then you've got this line that's been etched into it. Um, and that's just your standard sort of line-based etching. Um, with all the texture that you can see around it, that's done a little bit differently. Instead of covering it with ground, you cover it with uh, rosin. And um, once that's melted onto the plate, it basically has these really tiny holes in it so that instead of... If you just put it in with those, with just the aqua tint on it, then instead of getting lines um, where it's exposed, you get tiny, tiny little dots, and it basically creates um, a gradient depending on how long you leave it in there. Um, so the way that you shade things is you you cover it with the aqua tint, and then so with this bit where it's nice and smooth, and the, it hasn't had that sort of etching process going on with the aqua tint, I actually covered that all with a bitumen. Um, to stop the acid going through, but around it, it's got more of a texture um, because the acid did go through, but it didn't make these lines, it just made the texture. I don't know if I'm explaining that too well, but I'll show you the, the progress pictures of how it went from just being lines to how it went to shadow. I'm really sorry that I'm not great at explaining this. Um, but yeah, I, l let's just have a look at the process. Alright, so what I started with, um, I'm not great at drawing, so I kind of just drew this thing and then um, popped it into Photoshop to try and clean it up a bit. And I, I basically just did a sort of line drawing by hand. 
um, and then I've put in some text and reversed it because when you're etching you're basically putting the plate on like that and it's pushing into the paper um, so if you write anything it has to go and reverse which yeah is a bit tricky to get your head around but you got to do it um, from there I used this sort of RNG stuff to transfer it I'm so sorry I forget what it's called um, but I transferred this image onto the plate sort of just like pushing it through like carbon copy paper um, yeah and that, that helped me get the lines so that I was able to do it um, and then when I had that initial uh, line work done I did a proof and this is my proof proof is like um, a test print pretty much uh, and you can see that in this one it's just line work there's no shading it does look a little bit shaded on the edges but that's just because I didn't clean the plate you know completely yeah you, you got to clean it properly otherwise you get that kind of stuff um, and this was the first one that I did so not really great at it but you get the idea of how that went um, just from the line etching and then after that we did the aqua tint and it starts to look really different here so yeah you can see that it's got shading um, and different levels of shading because you know first I blocked out this white area and then I blocked out the bits that were not so white so I guess like a bit in the eye there and a bit around here and then just sort of progressively blocked out bits and then you put it in the acid for longer and longer and longer so I think um, say this really light area around here was probably only in the acid for oh gosh maybe 15 seconds and then probably this bit here was 30 seconds and then the next bit would have been a minute and by the end of it I think the edges like this really dark bit here would have been maybe 8 minutes or 16 minutes and it all accumulates you know so it's not going in just for 16 minutes it's been uncovered through the process of the 15 and the 30 and the so it's actually probably more like half an hour maybe but yeah that's my um final design as for what it means with this assignment we were told to look at the concept of alter ego and any of you guys who've been watching me for ages know that alter ego is like my thing so i kind of took that really seriously with the whole um well, I mean, I interpret alter ego as being more about dark side. I know that you can have different kinds of alter egos. Uh, but yeah, sometimes my nightmares refuse to fade away. It's not just for, like, the unacceptable parts of me. It's also for the depression parts of me. Um, and so, yeah, I guess this is essentially representing me going a bit crazy. And then this sort of ghost thing coming out of me. And it could represent so much stuff, like... Um, you know, the self-expression of all the the stuff that I just try and lock away and whatever. Um, you can interpret it how you want. Uh, I, I would ramble for ages just about this one image if I wanted to explain everything that I, I think it's about. Um, but so once we had all these prints, uh, we made just like a version where we cut these sort of edges and leave a tab and what happens with that is we make it into a little bookie whoa and it's sort of all connected in this sort of uh, concertina fashion um so if we have a look at the book now this is the front cover um uh, i'm not entirely sure who did it i think it's really gross and i kind of really don't like it um and but yeah you can see here in the this bit where um he obviously didn't etch it uh in the reverse you know started started writing as if he was just writing normally but you know i said before you've got to write backwards and i think that's what that mistake was um yeah it's a little bit gross maybe i'll blur it out um i don't know anyway here's some of the different art so one of the things I noticed is a lot of the other students, I don't really know if they took the alter ego thing as seriously as I did. I think they were kind of just like, ooh, I can do some art and make it pretty. Um, I guess some of these could be alter egos. There are some that definitely look like alter egos to me, but for the most part, it's just, there's, there's a lot of pretty stuff. Um, and some really interesting and cool work. And some bizarre ones, like this is one of the weirder ones. Just losing the shape of my book there. 
Um, I think this one's meant to be like that. I'm pretty sure it's a sort of abstract landscape. And then you know, this one. And um, I got to choose the order of how these images go in my book. Um, so I've kind of tried to do them, um, uh, first of all, based on orientation. So at the beginning, there are all those ones that are this way. Um, and I've sort of tried to get them like person, 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 weird monster thingy, landscape thingy. And then I'm transitioning to the door and going to the buildings and then going inside. Maybe I should have done the buildings first and then the door, I don't know. Um, and then this one I put in because it kind of makes me think of soap bubbles. I think this might have done, been done by splashing acid on it rather than um, drawing things on it. And yeah, because that one was kind of domestic, I thought, hey, splashing bubbles. And then this one, um, it's just like, because that one's abstract, I've got another abstract thing. And this one to me looks like a alter ego thing. You've got your dark and you've got your light. And I, I really like duality, so yeah, I like that one a lot. And then there's my one coming right after that because I just like, I like having them together. Um, and then we've got this really abstract one. Uh, I don't know what that means. And then this one is another one that makes me think, yeah, this could be an alter ego. You could be a cat on the inside or, yeah, I don't know. And then this one, it's really cute. A little fairy cat and feeling down and I like that one a lot. Um, oh, and here we've got a snake. And this one is really epic. Uh, this girl, she's like actually an illustrator and she does heavy metal covers and stuff and I, I really love her work. Um, yeah, oh, now we go this way. So there wasn't really consistency of format, it was kind of just, you know, do what you like and decide which way you want it to go. Um, yeah, and then we finish on, I think that's the last page, yeah, we finish on this weird plant thing. Um, so that's the book and the way it's put together I don't know if you can see, um, but with each one we have like our little tabs on the end and that's how I know which side is up for some of those um, sideways ones. And you just sort of keep putting them together in this concertina. And then yeah, folds like that and let's not, let's not look at that bottom bit. Alright, now let's look at something else. Okay, so the first assignment being alter ego was really easy for me to get into. Uh, but the second one, the topic was, uh, it was called an Australian be bestiary, bestiary, I, I, I'm not, I'm so bad with pronunciation sometimes. Um, but basically like a series of things about Australian animals. Um, but the good thing is they didn't have to be real animals. And I mean, I get kind of bored of Australian stuff. Just when you're growing up Australian, the schools tell you all the stuff, you know, it's the history, including before white people, um, and then all the animals that we have that other places don't. And sometimes I feel like looking at the bush all the time, you know, it's very dry, not just like dry as a topic, but dry literally. <laughs> um, so sorry, I love puns, and if you hate them, you you probably start to hate me once I start telling more of them. But yeah, so realizing that we didn't have to do just real animals really helped me and originally I was thinking of doing a sort of rainbow serpent thing but being at a very left-wing university um, I didn't want to get into the whole cultural appropriation debate so I ended up going for the drop bear which I think is heaps more hilarious anyway um, and the way I've interpreted the drop bear is as a teddy bear falling holding a knife um, and so this is my zinc plate for that and give you a little shine in the light so you can see a bit more. I think you can see this one a lot better than the other one. Um, but yeah, so a similar process, um, but because it's bigger I did have to do a bit more planning. So first of all let's look at the the proof once I'd done the line work. Um, pretty simple and yeah you can see I'm not a great drawing artist. It's just it's really childish and some bits are, look like they're probably a bit too big and whatever. Um, but my teacher was really good and gave me some tips on how to make it a little bit better than, you know, my usual drawing. Um, I also intentionally tried to mess it up a bit. So you can see I've done these really, um, oh, the light's getting a bit bad today, but you can see the lines 
are really messy. Um, I messed them up a bit more on purpose just to get more of that uh, a bit of a falling effect, but also I think when you make things messier, it kind of makes them creepier. So I really like that messy aesthetic. Um, after that, though, is aqua tinting. And there was just no way I was going to be able to do this off the top of my head like I did with the last one. So what I did is um, I scanned I scanned this into Photoshop. And then I um, basically used Photoshop to try and uh, plan out what I wanted to look at what I want it to look like and then I've gone and put like okay this is going to go in for zero seconds so that means I'm going to block out the entire thing um, and then this one I'm going to block out after 15 seconds and then 30 and it's it's a bit hard to see on the camera but yeah I planned out how many and then you know wrote down here uh, so this would be for the actual teddy 0, 15, 30 seconds, 1 minute and then the 2 minutes, 4 minutes, 8 minutes, 16 minutes were going to be for the background to try and make that all whatever. Of course, like, it didn't end up looking quite like this just because, um, you know, Photoshop and actually using a paintbrush really different. But that helped me heaps. And so um, I did a few different proofs of this one um, before printing the main run just because this, I think, was the first one. And um, it actually went really well. Like, I... I'm so glad I planned out my aqua tinting because it looks almost exactly the same as what I intended to do. The only thing is this ink is the student grade ink and you can see it's like really patchy. So then um, my teacher, uh, I think, which one's the one he got me used? I think this one might be the better ink and you can see it's just covered it a lot better. So I had to get some professional grade ink um, and I actually got this brown one um i'm not sure how well the color comes out on the camera for you guys but um yeah nice coverage and all that and then um we sort of mixed it in with a bit more of a black i think that's what this is so it's sort of like a mix between black and brown um because i think the brown was a bit too much and i liked the black so it kind of compromised and did an in-between one and so that's basically what it ended up looking like um yeah, I'll show you what everyone else did. Alright, so this is my class's uh, bestiary. Um, I'm going to censor one of the names because he didn't have his in when we collected them, so I'm just not going to give him credit for it right now. Um, but yeah, uh, so we've started off with this. I think this is a screen printed cover and it gives you the names and then the animals that people did. Um, so yeah. Uh, I think most people did regular animals. The ones that are a bit weird are mine as the drop bear. Someone did an elephant, which isn't really Australian, but we do have them in the zoo, so I guess that counts. Um, and then uh, there's the Australian raptor, which is an extinct animal. Um, I think the rest are pretty straightforward. Um, maybe the blue whale is a bit out there as well, since they kind of just pass by rather than being in Australia, but... Yeah, it's, um, there's an interesting set of different techniques in this, so uh, let's have a look. First up, we've got um, Eleanor's swan, and it's kind of an abstract thing. I think it's got to do with, like, maybe that's the wing shape. Um, yeah, that's a really abstract sort of one, and uh, I'm not entirely sure how to look at it, so you'll just have to decide for yourself, I think. Um, next one was supposed to be someone else's, but it's not, so instead we've got, um, Carrie's. Uh, Carrie's really funny, um, I, I, I love her. She, she's actually done this class before, so she knows what she's doing. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, Emu, and it's about the Emu Wars, and if you don't know what the Emu Wars are, <laughs> I would go and look it up, because it's kind of hilarious. Uh, Australia, I think, had some kind of emu overpopulation and so uh, for some reason the army got involved in trying to cull them but because emus have really thick feathers and all that um they wasted so many bullets and killed hardly any of them and so more or less the emus won the emu war it's the most ridiculous war australia has ever been involved in um and that's basically what this is about so um the way she signed it it's meant to stand up like this but uh you could look at it like this as well with a little emu running inside the bullet. But yeah, I, I love that. It's so amusing. Oh yeah, um, my edition that I picked, I've got um, 16. There's 22 of these 
um, these sets of bestiaries. Um, and mine's number 16, and I, I like the number 16. I mean, my birthday fits it really nicely. So, yeah, I'm a little bit sentimental. I, I'm sure some of the other guys were hoping to get the number one or whatever, but I went for my number, which is good, because no one else really wants 16. That's for me. Anyway, next one. Um, this is by Caitlin, and it's sheep, but what she's done is um, it's basically trying to mimic the texture of some kind of sheep wool. Uh, so yeah, it looks heaps abstract, but it, it's meant to be the sheep and there's so much detail in it and I have no idea how you, how you even approach that. But um, yeah, that's what that is. Uh, and then turning the page, there's my one, the drop bear, probably the most childish one in the whole <laughs> set. Um, yeah, I really love the cute but creepy kind of vibe. I mean, there's me playing with duality again, cute but creepy. Um, moving on, next one is Anna, and it's the kangaroo. It's a really tiny one, so can I bring that closer? Oops, a little bit. I don't know, I've got really bad lighting at the moment. It was sunny before, and now the sun's going away. Yeah, you get the idea of that. Next one up, um, Goo... I think that's how you say his name, Goo. It's the ant. Um, and he did that with, I think he did that with the sugar lift, so, um, yeah, I didn't actually get to do the sugar lift, but, um, it's this technique where you, it's actually some kind of weird sugar stuff that you paint on, and then once it dries, I think, over the top you put the bitumen paint, um, that you use to block things out when you're aquatinting, and then, as I understand it, you pour boiling water over it once it's all set, and that causes the sugar to lift off the bitumen bit. I'm, I think that's how it goes, but yeah, I don't know. It's really interesting because you get um, those paint brushy strokes. Actually, I'm not sure if that's how Ewan did his one, um, or if it was just the aquatining process, but yeah, it's really interesting, it looks really cool. Um, next one, ooh, the next one's the elephant. <laughs> Um, who's that? That's Meng. Meng did the elephant. And she used the sugar lift for these bits as well. And then I, I'm not entirely sure, but she's managed to put that elephant on the inside there. Um, yeah. Uh, I still don't really know why the elephant is in the Australian thing, apart from them being in the zoo. But I think she's done a really good job, because, you know, it's got to do with poaching, and that's why it looks like blood, and she's chosen the red. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Next one would be Min. And it's the kitty cat. A tiny little kitty cat hiding in the tree. It's so cute. Um, I think maybe in the little booklet she might have done one of the cat ones as well. So like a real cat person. Um, and I really like the texture going up the tree. I think, like, I didn't actually see her doing that earlier on. So I was really surprised. Um, and pleasantly so to see that it's got this cool texture going on in it. Um, so yeah, I, I really like that one. Next one up is um, Tamara, and she's done a frill neck lizard. Um, I think that one's actually meant to be in this direction. Um, so yeah, with the frill neck lizard, it's basically the, the actual frill. She's tried to get the shape in there and there. So another one of the more abstract ones. And she went through a few different versions before she settled on this. Like, she was just going to do the lizard, like, actually as it is, instead of this abstract thing. Um, so yeah, she, she actually did a lot of work to finally settle on this design and drew a few different ones. So yeah, that's that. Um, the next one is uh, Alish. I think that's how you say it. I'm so confused because the, the teacher's a really funny guy and he would... Um, intentionally mispronounce things and like mess with people so I don't actually know anymore if um she's Alish or Alish because he's just said it so many times and my brain's like I don't know what to think anymore but yeah so she's done the um blue bottle jellyfish um every summer at the beach the bloody blue bottles turn up and they sting like crazy um I haven't been stung by one, but my brother got stung and it's not a pleasant experience. But what she's done to make it a little bit different is she's actually drawn them sort of as plastic bags. So here's the bag bit and then you've got these two handles. So there's kind of an environmental thing in there. 
Um, this plastic bags kind of float around like jellyfish as well. So yeah, the two little jellyfish and then the big one and these really cool tentacles. And then the way she's done the background, I really like that. Um, it's got that real watery look to it. So that, that's a cool one. Um, she and I actually got ours done the first, like we were the first to finish ours. Um, so we were working together a little bit. All right, the next one is uh, Rada. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's a really tiny compared to the others, but it's the um, Australian Raptor, and she's done it as a stamp. I'm not really sure what the significance of the stamp is, but it's really cool. Um, and I think she's used... Um, th there's some weird technique she used to get it from Photoshop onto the etching plate. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know what that technique was. I think it's maybe like sort of using heat to transfer it on somehow. Um, try and bring it up a little bit closer. Yeah, it's, it's a really cool one. I like it. And I like dinosaurs, so of course I like it. Uh, this one is Hannah, and it's the camel. Um, camels are an introduced species that kind of have exploded into the desert somewhere, and there's just a whole bunch of them running wild now. Um, and yeah, I really like the way she's done the shadows. It's hard to see um, in this print, and it's probably even harder to see it on the camera, but there are these shadows with people um, sort of, I think, I think that's someone leading the camel here. And then over here, I think that might be a shadow of one riding it. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it, it's really, uh, I really like that one as well. It's got that sort of sandy vibe to it. Um, I don't know if bringing it closer will help you see any of that. Especially in this light, with my light getting all crazy. Yeah, you can sort of just see those shadows, especially this and that. Um, yeah, anyway, moving on. This one is Doug's Budgies, and he's got extra colours in it. So I actually didn't get to ask him. Um, there are a few ways to do different colours, like you can just really carefully paint them on. Um, but he might have used more than one plate to get that effect. I don't know, but it's it's really cute. Um, moving on, this is Anna. And she's done the peacock. But, um, so you can sort of see this peacock footprint going around. And I think there was an interesting technique involved in that as well. Um, but on the inside, this little guy, he's so cute. Can you see him? He's like a little peacock spider. Peacock spider! It's so adorable! Anyway, um, this one is Wu. Uh, she's done the penguin. Um, I can't remember which island it is, but there's some Australian island that's just got heaps of little penguins on it, and I'm not 100% sure, I might be making this up, but I think it might be, um, like, there, there was some pest, and then they introduced some dogs to try and hunt down the pest so that the Penguins don't keep getting eaten. I think that might be the story, but I might be lying. And so she's got this sort of dog. Um, it's actually, I think, was meant to be one dog, but she's sort of done it so that it has a sort of a double exposure uh, looking at the penguins, and that's really cute as well. Oh, there are some really good artists in this class doing some really cute stuff. I love it. Uh, this one is Zeng. I'm actually not sure if I'm supposed to be reading the first names on this list or if I'm meant to be using their surnames. Um, I feel really bad about that, but yeah, I, I anyway. Um, hers is the blue whale. Oh, I think I am doing it the wrong way because on this it says uh, Xu Xing. I'm so sorry guys if I'm saying their names wrong. Um, yeah, anyway. This is the blue whale one and um, it, it looks, it came out really good. She had a lot of trouble early on because um, when she was doing the aqua tint, she accidentally put it in for heaps longer than she was meant to. So some of these ones that aren't, that, that are like a little bit lighter, they were heaps dark before. And then what she's done is come in with a burnishing tool to sort of flatten down those pores. Because the pores hold the ink and the deeper the pores are, the more ink they hold. But if you sort of take the tops off them, as I understand it, it reduces the amount of ink that they can hold, and that's how you lighten it once it's gotten too dark. So even if you make a mistake, there are ways to bring it back. And um, I think it's worked really well. It actually makes it heaps moodier than I thought it was going to be originally. So yeah, and this is a 
a cute little baby whale. Uh, yeah, next one is the wombat. So this is either Zhang or Rangzu, and I have no idea how to pronounce Chinese, so I'm I'm doing it wrong either way anyway. So yeah, hers is the wombat. Um, I think originally she wanted to do something with the transparency on top to get some different colours in, but uh, she's changed her mind. But you can see in the background there's sort of this hand shape. So it's sort of like um, her idea was to try and be holding the wombat. I'm not sure if that's a comment on endangered species. I don't. I, I guess the wombat might be endangered. I'm really, you know, you can tell that I'm not that um, that much of an Australian animal enthusiast because I don't know these things. But yeah, it's really cute as well. Um, a really interesting sort of idea. Uh, and I think it worked out pretty well considering she wasn't able to do her original uh, concept for it. And then the last one is Sonali. Now Sonali is the one who did that epic snake um, thing in the book with the, the little girl with the uh, uh, kite, I think, and the big cobra. And so she's done the platypus in this one. And this one's another interesting one. I think she might have used the acid splashing thing. So you've got the tiny little, uh, the platypus poking its bill out here. And then you've got all this water and it's got this real river vibe. Um, yeah, that's everything. That's um, our etching stuff. Put the thing back on there and blow that guy's name out again. And yeah, it was a really good class and it helped a lot having a really cool teacher. I mean, he was heaps fun and, um, you know, be before all my classes, I'm actually registered with the university's disability services. So I have to tell the teachers before class, um, like, you know, at the start of semester, uh, that I have this condition and send them my paperwork and all that. So they all know that I've got this condition, but um, actually one one morning I came into class and uh, I was a little bit early and I was feeling really awful. So I went into his office to talk to him because um, it runs from 10 to 1, but we usually stay until about 5 or 6 o'clock because we just in the studio all day. And the good thing is you don't have homework there. But it can be really hard work because you're, especially if you're doing the printing press and turning the wheel, I found that the hardest because you um, are just pulling the thing all the time and it, I'm very small, I don't have good muscles, so after a while you get really tired. Um, yeah, so knowing that in mind, I was going into his office just to say, hey, I'm not feeling great, um, I'll probably leave a bit early today. And I actually just like, without any warning, I didn't know this was going to happen. I just broke down in his office and he was really good about it. Um, you know, getting me to calm down and being like, look, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, so yeah, he was a really fun teacher in class. And then for things like that, when I was having a bad day, he was, um, really good about that too. So I never felt bad about coming to class. It was like, yep, yeah, going to learn stuff and it's not going to be too stressful. Um, so if anyone, happens to be watching this from UNSW Art and Design, I really recommend the custom printing class. It's hard to get into because they are small classes and there's a bit of a waiting list. Um, because the custom printing I think is just one class but it's mixing undergrad and postgrad and the beginner and advanced students. So yeah, get in as soon as you can if you're going to do that. And if you're somewhere else, um, etching was fun. Um, if you have a chance of going to Cicada Press and working with them there, um, that's cool, but I guess you've got to be in Sydney to do that. So, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do a whole lot of printmaking, but it was fun to have the experience. And I guess maybe next time I might show you some more of my art. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Hey, I hope the lighting wasn't too bad in this video. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll do what I can to fix it in software. And if I have fixed it, great. This, this outro is pointless, but yeah. Um, started off being really sunny and now it's just getting more and more overcast and I don't know we were supposed to have a storm this morning but it didn't turn up uh, now maybe it is turning up and we'll just have a later storm um, hey who knows the weather reports are always a bit dodgy aren't they um, oh hello Marley they're trying to get involved but yeah it's starting to get windy and it's a little bit cold out here so I'm gonna go back inside if it does storm later though I'll see if I can get any interesting footage it's really hard to get lighting on camera though, so I'll do my best. Anyway, see you later. Hope it didn't look too bad. Um, let me know if you want to see more art and I'll see what I can do. Bye for now!
Pope's looking for his friend. Um, there's a dog who lives on the other side of the fence and they just sort of woof at each other every now and then. No, he's not there, is he, Hope?